Before we start this podcast, I want to definitely remind you of a sponsor for Fresh of the Word, 20 by 20 Apparel. Founded in 2015, 20 by 20 Apparel brings original tributes to pro wrestling's classic arenas, moments, and events. They look to spotlight the bloopers, bleeps, and body slams, along with the biggest, smallest, strangest, and strongest. In the world of wrestling, where there's hundreds of shirts, promotions, flyers, social media accounts, and ads, don't get lost in the sea of parody shirts and display fonts. They can provide professional graphic design services at a reasonable price. 20x20 20 20 also hand screen prints all the tees in-house. So if you'd like to discuss a possible run of tees, posters, koozies, foam fingers, or even Zubaz, then drop them a line at 20x20apparel.com. That's the number 20x, the number 20apparel.com. And also check out their enamel pin line. It's super cool. Fresh is the word. I'm Jim Duggan, got long wood for plenty hoes. I keep it fresher than fresh, but you already know. You suckers bum me, I'm money, I got a ton of flows. My weed loud like a motherfucking thunder roll. Your shit quiet like you ballin' on a budget though. We see your kicks and we laugh and yell at one of those. You see me shining like a suit on puppy. You know my grind and shit is too strong, buddy. That's why the dude call money. I be stuntin' like it's nothing at all. Cause it's nothing to me, it's probably something to y'all. Trying to smoke like me, then come and fuck with your dog. Got a closet full of kids, you can't cop it tomorrow. And I'm fresher than the freshest, you can tell it's in my essence. Bitch, you see the way I'm rapping? Yes, I do this shit to death. I tell I'm running out of breath. I tell somebody cut a check. But either way, you know it's fresh. But either way, you know it's fresh. Fresh. We fresh. 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 God damn it, we fresh. Welcome to the Fresh of the Word podcast. I'm your host, Kelly K. Fresh Frazier, and this is episode 180. And our guest for this episode is Kiana June Weber, a classically trained Celtic fiddler born and raised in Chelsea, Michigan, and attended the University of Michigan, where she studied violin under Stephen Ships. She previously performed with the violin-based ensemble Barrage and the Celtic band Gaelic Storm. Currently, Kiana June Weber plays the fiddle on the touring company of the Broadway musical, Come From Away. During our chat, Kiana June Weber shares with us experiences with Come From Away, a musical based on the true story of 7,000 passengers diverted to a small town in Newfoundland for five days after the events of 9-11. She also tells about her upbringing in Michigan and attending the University of Michigan, along with her time in Barrage and Gaelic Storm. She also shares her knowledge of the Celtic culture in North America, why she has been always drawn to it. Come From Away comes to the Fisher Theater in Detroit this week on October 1st, running through October 13th. For more information and tickets, go to broadwayindetroit.com. All right, let's get on to the interview with Kiana June Weber. You're a part of this musical, Come From Away. It's based on a true story of... You know, all these passengers that were diverted into the small town after the events of September 11th. What's it like being a part of this story and providing the music, being a part of, uh, you know, providing the music for it? Well, it's a really special show, actually, because the music is interwoven into the telling of the story so beautifully. In fact, we're we're on stage with the actors the entire time, Um so I, I'm the fiddle player in the show, and I have the honor of being on stage with these 12 amazing actors the entire 100 minutes of the show. Um, and it's a beautiful story because it's told through the music that is um, so present in Newfoundland, which is this Celtic-inspired North American music. Um, and so when Irene Sankoff and David Hine decided they wanted to tell this story of you know what happened basically starting 912 when all these people of this small town banded together to take care of this group of international travelers they wanted to do it through the music of the region so it's actually just really a huge honor to be a part of this unique telling of important events but through this this music that's very you know this folk music that's really part of this place's history 
And it's fun for me as well because I have grown up, growing up in Michigan, I was um, exposed to a lot of Celtic music. You know, we have such a rich culture of folk music and particularly Celtic music. And to be getting to do that on such a high level is just such a treat. Yeah, how important was it to have that sort of authenticity of the music be a part of the show? Um, it's it's hugely important, and um, our musical directors have been very particular about keeping it as authentic as possible the entire time, from the instrumentation um, down to even the musical choices of orchestration. They've clearly done a huge amount of research, and um, yeah, it, it's really that was a, a hugely important thing for them. So when you come see the show, you'll see all of the, you know, the authentic instruments of that region. There's a bazooki, there is a button accordion, um, there's fiddle, there's illin pipes and flutes and whistles and a boron, which is a, a drum made out of goat skin that's um, used a lot in folk music in that region. How did you get the opportunity to be a part of Come From Away? How did everything happen? Um, well, everyone's story is a little bit different. For me, um, I so grew up in Chelsea, Michigan. Um, I ended up studying classical music at University of Michigan, but my whole life I was playing fiddle music, picking up tunes as much as possible, just absolutely in love with Celtic music. And <laughs> um, I ended up um, getting a job with this band called Gaelic Storm and toured with them for many years. And they're a big... Um, big presence in North American Celtic music, basically. Right. <clears throat> so I toured with them for quite a while, and um, through that, um, well, basically, a, a lot of this music in this show is is written um, from inspirations like bands like Great Big Sea and Gaelic Storm, because it's this wealth of North American Celtic music. So um, I was lucky enough that some of the music that I'd played with this band inspired some of the orchestrations in the show. And um, I basically through um, professors at the University of Michigan, they connected and put my name forward when this job came up. They were looking for a fiddle player that could, could play all this Celtic stuff, but that also had classical training and could read the Broadway charts, basically. Um, so yeah, my name was tossed in and I've been happy to call this tour my home for the last year. Awesome. Awesome. What's been sort of like the reaction of the, you know, the crowd or any sort of feedback that you've been received for your time with come from away. Oh, it's been amazing. We have the most exhilarating audiences and I guess those that are coming to the show should expect it to be a whirlwind of emotion. It's just scripted in such a way that it's constantly moving. And by the end of the show, people are on their feet and screaming and clapping along with the band. And it's just, it's, it's a reaction unlike anything else. And I think that's part of what's made this, um, this musical have such a groundswell of support. You know, we often sell out in places before we even get there because there's just such a word of mouth. And I think it's also a, a message people are really hungry for right now. So there's just a, a huge emotive reaction to the show. When did you first sort of get the musical bug, you know, growing up in Michigan? Um, I started playing violin when I was seven. Um, and my, my parents, my mom's a teacher, actually. Well, both of them are teachers. But my mom is still teaching um, at Emerson School in Ann Arbor. And she had me start uh, piano just a couple years before that because it's good for development and all of that sort of stuff. And I really liked it, but I wanted to switch to violin from the very start and I begged and eventually I was allowed to. And I think Michigan has a really unique culture. You know, it has sort of its own musical culture, maybe because it's a peninsula, but it has this wealth of folk music that I haven't found in a lot of other places in the country. Right. And yeah, I got the bug from picking up a violin and had a great teacher that exposed me to classical music, but also to fiddle tunes and folk music at the same time. And, and then I found a huge amount of support for that growing up in the area. There was constantly extracurricular fiddle activities or, you know, fiddle bands. I played in the Chelsea House Orchestra for a long time. Um, there's just so many different opportunities, which we're really lucky to have in this state. Why do you feel like this sort of music has a, you know, a strong presence, you know, not only in Michigan, but just in North America? 
Um, well, part of it is the, the immigrant culture, um, particularly in Newfoundland, where this play is set. There's a huge number of Scottish and Irish immigrants. So it's sort of the first, you know, it'd be the first point you would hit if you took a boat straight over from Ireland right. to North America. A lot of them stayed and brought their music with them. So the music that's grown there is very, very related to the Celtic music you find in the British Isles today. Um, and I, I think that's true for a lot of North America, you know, Celtic, Irish and Scottish and even English immigrants brought their music with them and formed these very strong musical cultures, maybe even as a way of connecting with their home. In some places, I think that the, the musical culture became even stronger than the place that they left, you know? At the University of Michigan, they've always had a really good and really strong, you know, school of music, great musical presence there. You know, talk about your, mm-hmm. your time during uh, going to uh, University of Michigan. Um, well, I found it to be a great school. They have a fantastic um, music school and musical theater program. Um, there's a huge number of really talented students. Um, I had sort of a strange experience because I, I did two years at the school and then got a touring job and left and then came back again to finish up. So I didn't have the totally typical student experience, but I found such a high level of performance. It was really um, inspiring to be there with so many people that were working that hard. You know, it's a very high attaining school program. What were some of the things that you learned going to uh, uh, the University of Michigan, you know, what was sort of like the atmosphere of learning from your uh, point of view? Hmm. The atmosphere of learning. Um, I guess mostly what I look back on is the time that I was able to just really spend studying technique. Um, I, I think maybe the luxury of being able to go to a music school allows you just very dedicated time um, practicing particular techniques and, you know, working on sort of a very narrow focus of classical playing that you don't necessarily ever get to devote time to again when you're, you know, out in the hustle and bustle working different jobs. (laughs) So that'd be, I guess that'd be the main thing I'd look back at. Right. Then you would uh, eventually you know, join the Canadian violin troupe uh, Barrage and be able to go, then you'd be able to go like everywhere, like across, you know, North America, Central America, overseas. How is that sort of experience? Oh, that was amazing. So that's the job I actually left for in the middle of college. So I did two years and then I got scouted by this violin troupe, basically, which is a Canadian, um, it's really hard to describe (laughs) It was a Canadian fiddle troupe that played music from all over the world. We play various different styles of music. Um, I was sort of like the Celtic specialist, and there'd be someone that played a lot of jazz and someone that played a lot of um, like Spanish sort of style fiddle. And we would dance throughout the whole show. Sort of, it was very highly choreographed. We'd end up doing a lot of ballroom dance and various things to the music we were playing. <laughs> and we traveled everywhere. Um, yeah, it was absolutely incredible. My very first year, we spent um, over a month touring in Holland and Belgium, um, which was amazing as a 19 year old. I just was like, this was so much more than I had experienced in my first introduction to professional music, really. Um, And yeah, we got to travel all over the place. I think that year we also went to Central America. And um, that was eye opening for the for the music part of it, but also I think it really shaped my worldview. This amount of travel I was able to do that we, you know, we got to see places that you wouldn't necessarily go for a holiday. You you end up you end up seeing places very differently. I think, which has just yeah, it's been something I've been so thankful for in my life. Let's talk more about that. You know, given you know this gift of being a musician and being able to tour to those different places. You know, talk more Mm -hmm. about how that has shaped your worldview and how you are as a musician and just as a person. Um, hmm. Well, I'd say it has made me more tolerant as a person, first of all, because you just come in contact with so many different cultures and many places you're not even able to speak the native language, but you're able to play music and connect with them in that way. And I think that's made that's made music 
extremely meaningful for me. And I find that it comes again, you know, I, I think of that all the time when I'm performing a show like this, even though we're performing for people in a language they understand, there's so much more that's conveyed by the texture of the music, the way that, you know, um, it's a very minimalist show and it's sort of left up to the audience to feel the weight of what's being said. So there might be, you know, very sparse dialogue in an area, but then it's up to the violin or the flute to sort of carry that emotion and express that thing that you're not really able to say. Um, but so anyways, in, in all of the travels that I did with this group and in Gaelic Storm as well, I think that's been a huge takeaway is the, I don't know, the humility of being in a place you don't understand, but then still being able to connect with music in some way, um, whether it's connecting with local audiences or even getting to play with other musicians in that area. I recently had a really amazing experience touring with Carlos Nunez, where we went to Tunisia, and I obviously did not speak the language at all, but we got to play with a local piper there, and it was just a really magical experience to get to sort of connect musically, even though we couldn't really say a word to each other. When did you sort of realize that you can connect with these different cultures, even if you don't know when the language is, like just through music, you know, when was that first time you re that really hit you? Um, probably touring with Barrage. Um, we went to China for a month and that was so far outside of anything I knew and my comfort zone. And it was just a whirlwind of new experience, but I was shocked by the audience reaction that we got and the number of people that would come up to, talk to us or even just like stand next to us and get a picture taken afterwards. And they would make every effort they could to tell us in English, you know, what they thought or how they played the violin or what was meaningful to them. And we would, you know, in my very pidgin Chinese would say like, thank you so much. And it, it didn't express everything that you wanted to, but we'd already shared that musical experience um, for the last, you know, hour or two hours during the show. And I, I think that's when it really sunk in. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm sharing something with these people that, you know, we have in common now and maybe we didn't before. A lot of what you, you know, described in regards to any of these shows that you've been a part of is that you're a part of the show for pretty much the whole time. You know, talk about like the physicality of being a part of these shows and how do you prepare for the physicality of being on stage for an hour, hour and a half straight, you know, playing music and keeping, keeping your energy up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's. I mean, you train for it, just like an athlete trains for a race or something. I guess that's one thing that university was really good for, is that you slowly work up to practicing many hours a day, and, and you know, you sort of get in shape for it. Um, and with each show, like with, say, with Come From Away, there was a full rehearsal period of about a month where, you know, the actors were working on staging, and then we had two weeks of, technical production where we are working, making sure all of the moving pieces fit together, which there are many. And, you know, you have, they call it a show build for a reason. You, you sort of take your time putting all these pieces together. And at the same time that's happening, you're also getting your body in shape and getting your mind in shape for what's going to be a very rigorous performance schedule. And I mean, this show right now, we do eight shows a week all year. Um, and we've been all over North America so far this year. So it's, <laughs> It's it's a lot. It's definitely quite a lot. You have to take care of your mind and your body. And I guess the exciting thing is that everyone is working just as hard and you all come together for this period to make it happen. And there's a really lovely energy about that. How do you um, personally take care of yourself? Just the mind, body, emotions <laughs> of everything? Uh, well, I... Huh, okay. I try to do a lot of yoga. Um, I also run just for my own health and mental, um, I guess, like it's almost like therapy for me, just going out for runs and getting outside. Right. And then before, so I show up early, tune up my instrument, try to do a basic warm up on my instrument. And I also try to do a little bit of like a physical warm up, like whether it's stretching in the hallway or just getting my heart rate up a little bit. Um, and then we do the show, and then afterwards, I usually 
try to do a little bit of a cool down. I'm trying more and more now that we're a year in to actually do some cool down and like rolling out with, you know, all of the equipment that we have on tour with us because so many of us have gotten injured over the course of the year. Um, so it's just kind of a constant, constant little bits of maintenance as much as possible. When, you know, playing a, a, a string instrument like the uh, fiddle, how do you maintain that piece of equipment when you're doing so much touring? Mm, that is tough. <laughs> <laughs> um, I try to sneak into like a little repair shop during the day if I get a chance to, if I need to. I'm also pretty fastidious about, you know, cleaning it down every night, taking care of it myself. And you learn little things as you go about how to sort of do a lot of the work that you can on your own um because you really don't have a day off to take your instrument in for a checkup you just have to kind of keep it in tip-top shape yourself as much as possible yeah that's all i don't have a great answer for that still figuring that one out still figuring that one out going back um how did you uh, end up joining gaelic storm um they were how did that happen I basically, they were, their fiddle player was leaving um, and I heard about it through some mutual friends in the industry and um, I think, oh yeah, they flew me down to Nashville for an audition, that's what it was. They were doing a, a live taping of a radio show and flew me down to perform something. I didn't really know what it was, but I, I learned off um, their last two albums just had them completely memorized and down ready to play anything and flew down and they asked me to play a few songs with them which I knew because I'd done the research and then they offered me the job the next day so <laughs> then I started touring with them right now yeah, you'd end up playing on several albums uh, with them you know what was sort of yeah. like the, uh, the experience with Gaelic Storm both touring and also you know the recording of their albums um, it was fun. It was a whirlwind. They're a great band. Um, I'm sure many people in Michigan have seen them perform at either Michigan Irish Fest or around the state. Um, yeah, it was it was crazy. I mean, we headlined all of the largest Irish festivals and Celtic festivals um, in the world and um, traveled all over the place. Um, the recording process was really fun and creative. We often did recording in um, Austin, Texas, where the guitarist um, Stephen Twigger was based, and we kind of sit up there for a couple weeks and head into the studio and worked creatively on trying to find a mix of sort of modern Celtic folk music, but also bringing back some older elements, you know, trying to find old tunes to put into albums or sneak into songs. Um, and yeah, it ended up being a really interesting, fun process. We uh, recorded, I think I recorded four Billboard number one albums with them. I should double check that number, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, which was, yeah, a pretty humbling experience, but really, really exciting. Getting back to uh, Come From Away, you know, this is a... Mm -hmm. This is a story, like we said before, that's based on these actual events that took place after the um, September 11th in the small town of uh, Newfoundland when uh, all these, you know, planes get diverted at the time. And um, sort of what's so special about this story? Because you're going to have all these different people from everywhere, you know, landing into this small town, you know, basically doubling their population you know mm -hmm. in one day <laughs> you know so what's you know so yeah. what's so special about this uh this story i mean i think what's really special about it for me is that it's it's true this really happened in this tiny town instead of saying oh gosh we can't handle all these people or putting them up in you know some random building people took them into their homes they just put them up and it ended up being five days that all these people were stuck there. So about 7,000 people caring for another 7,000 people that were stranded. Um, and I think it just, it speaks for, speaks for the kindness of humanity, I think, which has been such a meaningful message for me to be a part of, even in my small way, just providing the music for this, this remarkable true story to get to, share that I think is just really special it's 
it's just a really unique story and one I had I didn't know about until um, I started learning about this show. So I think it's brilliant that the show brings to light this really great story that happened out of what was really so much tragedy. And, you know, from your perspective, you know, I was reading that the creators, you know, took thousands and thousands and thousands of stories that were happening during those five days and were able mm-hmm. to mold them into a, a hundred minute musical with those 12 actors, yeah. you know, from your perspective, you know, like what's your thoughts about, you know, how they were able to sort of, you know, strip, you know, strip all those stories down into, to a story. It's amazingly well written. I mean, it's just, it's a masterpiece. And like I said before, it's, it's super fast moving. You're constantly changing between stories, but in a way that there's such a beautiful through line that you're never lost. You're never confused. It's just, so fast paced and you're really caught up in the whole thing. Just like, I think it's written to feel like the passengers felt, you know, you never have a moment where you get a break. You're just thrown into the story. And part of that even goes down to the fact there's no intermission in the, in the show. It's just a hundred minutes straight and you don't get a break because the plane people didn't get a break. And that's what our director said. Um, it's just beautifully written there's so many lovely touching stories and and sad ones as well i mean it's just a very truthful telling of the events and i have to say it's been made even realer for all of us because the producers of our show have been kind enough to fly out um many of the real characters from this story to meet us at multiple times they were there for our opening night in seattle they've been to visit us many many times um over the course of the year and so they are actually very real people to us. How was it here? You know, how was it hearing those stories directly from the people like during those times? Oh, it's so fun to get to meet them. I mean, and they're, they don't necessarily dwell on the stories, you know, that, I mean, I think they're proud of what they do, but they're not, they never brag about it. They just, uh, as Bonnie Harris, the, she's the lady who plays, um, um, the lady from the SPCA, which is sort of like the animal shelter, she just said, "We just we just did what you would have done," and that's the way they constantly say it. They they're not um, there's no hubris or anything there. They're just very very humble, down to earth people, which is so refreshing. Yeah, this you know this is a very relevant story today, you know because there's you know so much talk about you know immigration and. You know, uh, people trying to, you know, save themselves from, you know, the wars and the bad times in their own countries, trying to look for Mm -hmm. some sort of country that will take them in. You know, what do you hope like people that are coming to see, you know, come from away, get get out of this story? Um. I think there's so much to get out of it. I, really, just the humanity of it all. I, I don't want to get politics into it. You know, I don't want to get too deep into all of it. But I think you have to come away from the show seeing the good of human nature and this ability of people to care for each other. And it's, it's just really beautiful. There's no fear. There's no worry. It's just, okay, we have to care for these people. How can we do it? And there's so many beautiful things that come out of these interactions, these very real friendships. In fact, there are people um, from this event that are still friends today and they've come to visit us and say, Oh yeah, we met in Gander and you know, we've been, we've been friends and stayed in touch, you know, as pen pals or, you know, actually coming to visit each other over the last, what is it? 18 years now. Um, Yeah. I hope people can just take that away. I suppose that this is, this is an example in the face of a huge tragedy. This is an example of what humanity can be and how good we can be to our neighbors and, and to strangers, really. I guess I'm, that's been another theme of my travel as well, that I've been constantly floored by the kindness of strangers. And I, I think that's really highlighted in this, in this musical. You know, kind of, you know, getting back to you, uh, been able to do things where you've been uh touring across the globe for you know about a decade now 
you're still very young. Where do you see yourself? What are some things that you want to do in the future? You know, maybe, you know, after come from away, you know, do you have any other things that you want to be working on or things that you would just love to do in the future? Um, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but there are so many and it's hard. It's hard to know, you know, I never would have I never would have thought of myself as part of a Broadway musical like this. That was never a plan. And I'm so thankful for it and so happy that this is my life right now. So it's it's hard to even make plans for that far in the future because you just never know what opportunity will come about. Um, but I guess for myself, I, I do, I love performing. I want to keep playing Celtic music. Um, I'm working on a, a solo album this fall. Um, which I'm still figuring out in so many different ways, but it's a, it's an interesting musical project to explore that for myself, I suppose. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what's after Come From Away. Right now I'm just very thankful and I'm hoping that it, it continues to <laughs> tour for a long time and spread this lovely message. Lovely, lovely. And I always like to a uh, ask this question of my guest, and that is like, if there's sort of a nugget of knowledge from your life or career that anybody listening to this interview could sort of project into their own life, no matter what sort of avenue of artistry that they're in, you know, what would that be? Oh, wow. That is such a tough question. I think maybe having a, a learning mindset, which sounds kind of hoity-toity to say, but I found my greatest joys have come from really allowing myself to just learn new stuff and also my biggest opportunities have come from the same just being open to i'm gonna get good at this i'm gonna learn it sure that sounds fun yes let's just let's learn how to do it and being really open to opportunities even though they might sound scary or they might not be completely in your current wheelhouse but that you're able just trust in your ability to learn new things, I guess. Yeah. Always be a student. Exactly. Yes. That's a much more eloquent way. <laughs> right. All right. It's been great talking with you, Kiana, you know, good luck with everything with uh, come from away. Um, where can people go online to get more information about you and for uh, come from away? So you can check out Kiana um, for more about me specifically. And if you um, check out come from away, um, online or on social media. You can find out all about the touring production and the Broadway production. Um, and we're going to be in Detroit really soon. So please come see us. Oh, I'll definitely be there. So that's my interview with Kiana June Weber. Links to where you can follow Kiana online and where you can purchase tickets for Come From Away in all the cities they'll be coming into, including Detroit, can be uh, found in the show notes for this episode at freshisthepodcast.com. And before we get out of here, I definitely want to remind you how you can support the podcast. You can support Fresh is the Word on Patreon at patreon.com slash fresh is the word. And for as little as a dollar per month, you can help out everything that I'm trying to do with the podcast. And then for $3 a month tier, you'll have access to the vast audio archives of interviews that I've done outside of Fresh is the Word for the past decade or so. There's a lot of good stuff already posted on the um the three dollar tier on Patreon, so you'll have access to everything from the past also. So go to patreon.com slash fresh of the word to sign up now and support everything that I'm trying to do with Fresh of the Word. I'm gonna have some news coming up in regards to the sort of state of Fresh of the Word. Um, it's gonna be a good thing. I'm gonna be expanding, separating some things coming up. Um, so once everything is solidified, uh It'll be, you know, everything will be much more organized and hopefully I can uh, promote all the podcasts. Yes, I said podcasts coming up, you know, in a better way coming up soon. So there'll, there'll be more information about that uh, and upcoming episodes. And stay tuned to uh, freshofthepodcast.com and all my social media. And uh, there'll always be news about and updates about what that's all about. And you can always contact me at djkfresh at gmail.com if you want to send me anything, pitch me anything, whatever, advances, promos, feedback, whatever. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at kfreshistheword. And please join the Facebook group at facebook.com 
slash groups slash fresh of the word. A lot of great people already in the group. And I always post some really interesting stuff that might be might not be on the podcast on there or might be, you know, people that might be in the podcast in the future. So there's going to be a lot of cool things going on this fall, um, creeping up on the four year anniversary, creeping up on the 200th episode. If you have any feedback about who you want to see for both of those milestones, you know, holler at me. All right. It's been another great episode in the books. Goodbye and good night. Fresh, 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 fresh is the word.